Hi guys and welcome back to At Home with Elisa. Today I wanted to show you something exciting that arrived in our mail. Um, I recently had my birthday and my husband wanted to take me out for a really beautiful romantic dinner and we would have spent a fair bit of money on dinner and I asked him if maybe we could go and just have a cheap eat instead and I could spend the money that we would have spent on dinner on plants. <laughs> Seems how it was my birthday. My wish came true and that's what I did so we went out we had cheap Mexican like kind of like ate it in the car and then we come back home and I was straight onto my phone and ordering some plants <laughs> I think it's what plant people do so anyway he, he was not really happy about the whole situation but I said and this doesn't count as my birthday present by the way this is just dinner this is not what you actually would have spent on me for my birthday so <laughs> So anyway, my plants have just come in the mail. So I ordered from a company called Australian Plants Online and I haven't opened it yet and I'm so excited to open it up so that I can show you what I got. So they're a company that send out tube stock and they send out like Australian native plants but they also send out international plants. So I've been doing a little bit of looking on their website and stalking them a little bit, you know, like as you do. But I just wanted to show you how they arrive. So this is very exciting. So they arrive in little packs like this, which I'm so excited for. So I have two of them. Um, I did order them a couple of weeks ago, so it took about two or three weeks for these to arrive. So I wanted to show you what came. And there's obviously information pack as well. So I will say that all the plants look really, really healthy. So I'm very, I'm very impressed with the quality. I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality of the way that they arrive. So I haven't ordered from this company before. Um, I had some relatives that I actually had ordered through them. So I was kind of keen to give it a go. Um, obviously we have had a lot of native plants that we purchased and we there's arriving tube stock. We actually purchased like big pots full of Australian natives and some of them I think we got some baronias we got about six baronias and they have a beautiful fragrance to them Australian native but they just all died in our floods so I think the six of them added up to like nearly three hundred dollars for these baronias and some native grasses and we've just had so many Australian natives that we've planted with all the flooding and all the rain that we've had they've literally just died so we do have some that were planted up on a berm and because they were obviously able to drain well they have survived but we have lost hundreds of dollars worth of Australian native plants since we've been here oh it's so heartbreaking like I know I'm laughing about it but it is it's heartbreaking so it is something that we do want to do we want to increase our plants that we've got here our Australian natives um obviously very down the back we do have quite a few growing down there naturally and we'd like to just sort of do our landscaping will be a mix of Australian natives and also like Europeans because you know, we're called Magnolia Acres that's the name of our property so there definitely will be a European element to it um, but we also love the, na the natives as well so it's just a matter of trying to mix them together and blend the two styles. So I'll show you the plants that we ordered oh this is one that we've actually already got so this is a Grevillea lupulu. I'll see if I can find photos for you. Um, this is a Grevillea lupulu, grows to about a metre and a half, and it's got beautiful, I'm not a big red person, but it's got like red and orange and kind of like a cream centre. So a beautiful Australian native. I do like Grevillea plants. We purchased a lovely big Grevillea tree, um, and it had beautiful cream um, blooms on it, and it was one of the ones that died, so I have to find another one. Um, so I obviously ordered three of the Grevillea Lupulus. So it's a matter of repeating some of the um, some of the plantings that we've already got because we know that those Lupulus are doing quite well here. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so if you have watched my property tour that I did, um, the first full property tour we ever did, down the back I had what was called I had a favourite tree, but I also had a favourite shrub. And it was a hairpin banksia. Let's see if I can find a photo or footage of that. So that is a beautiful hairpin banksia. So I, oh look, it looks like it's just bursting. I can see the roots underneath. So I cannot wait to plant that out. I'm gonna have to find spots for these straight away, I think. And what have we got here? Oh, some more banksias. So these are coastal cushion, 
um, and they look really healthy as well and again I don't know if you can see that but the roots you can see the roots coming through so they're obviously very healthy and this one is a Callistamon pink champagne now I do remember this one we actually have Callistamon otherwise known as bottle brush we have um, bottle brush growing here naturally just like literally down the back we have the red is pretty much the predominant one in an Australian landscape I believe that they've been um, hybridized and bred to be able to come in different colors so there is a white one that you can get which um, we had in it died in the floods but this one's the pink one so I'm very keen to get this into the ground because I thought it just looked I'm a pink girl and I thought it just looked so pretty so I can't wait to get that in and again they look they look so healthy look look at that very nice so that's the first one and this is the second one and they look so healthy so from memory I think I ordered a few of some of the same varieties like um because I do believe in in landscaping when you're doing landscaping is to repeat some patterns so there's obviously three of the same one here and these are Wistringer peppermint creams so look at that look at that variegation there we go so look at that variegation on the leaves that's just beautiful so we do have quite a few Wistringers here um, there's different types of astringers. Um, it's also known as coastal rosemary. Um, so we do have quite a few coastal rosemary here. Uh, when I first met my husband, I have said this before, but when I first met my husband, I told him I was a bit of a plant nerd. And um, he has done a green keeping course and knows a lot about grasses and turfs and all that sort of stuff. But he did remember one of the um, plants, which was called Wistringer fruticosia. So now every time we buy, we drive past and we see one like council used to be in plantings around here, I always like play dumb and say, oh darling, what was the name of that plant again that, you know, that one over there? And he'd be like, oh, that was a Wistringer fruticosia. And it's like a little joke that we have. <laughs> so we always wanted to make sure that we use quite a few of them around here. Um, they are beautiful as well. Like they come in so many different, I haven't seen a variegated one, but they do come in so many different types ones with white flowers, ones with purple flowers, um, and different heights as well. We're actually looking at maybe um, potentially putting one on a berm in between our property and the next door property. We're having a berm sort of um, built up and we're looking at planning it out with, with Stringer Fudicosia because it's kind of cute. So. <laughs> but yeah, so we got three of the peppermint creams. So very, very happy Like They all look so healthy. And look, again, they're ready to get into the ground. And I think this was the last plant that I ordered. Ah, so this is a penstemon. Look at that. So this is a native grass. So I'm very keen to get, excuse our rooster in the background, that's Eugene, he goes like that most of the day. But I'm very keen to get these into the ground. So I actually ordered five of these. Um, so we're doing some planting along, we have an embankment garden. Um, well, it's just an embankment at the moment, but it had been planted out into a garden with um, like lots of fountain grasses, obviously. So this is called a swamp fountain grass, which is native to us. Um, so we're looking to plant this one out um, and also like some salvias. I'd love to get my hands on some Mexican sage, um, maybe some penstemons, lamb's ears. Um, we just really want to make it quite pretty it's very ugly at the moment um, and I do have big plans for that area but it's just a matter of obviously because we have such a large area that we want to do the landscaping in buying plants in tube stock but like three dollars four dollars each compared to buying mature plants and still having a large area um, I'd rather buy what I can build up all my plant supplies for like you know even in six six to nine months build them up keep them in pots and then when it comes time to be able to plant them out, they'll be that little bit bigger, but I'll have all the plants that I want as well. And I won't have spent thousands of dollars. I might have spent a couple of hundred dollars. So that's the plan going forward for the embankment garden. But I'm very excited about those. That's some lovely growth there. Beautiful, beautiful growth. 
So as well as that embankment garden that I was talking about, I've actually also got plans to do a pathway from the very front of our property, um, basically where the driveway ends. It'll go past my mum's tiny home and her little entry to her yard, go down, you can actually see. So between the embankment, um, the catchment area and the fire pit, go all the way down here and past, and then the entry into the garden over here. So I'm hoping to do it with, um, line it somehow, I'm not sure how to line it, but put some beautiful white pebbles down and then plant it out either side with again like a mixture of Australian natives like some of the little abanxias, um, some little bottle brush that I've got like the dwarf ones that don't grow too high. Um, we also have our eye on some other plants as well to plant out as well to kind of make it like a little journey and a beautiful pathway down there. So I'm slowly accumulating the plants so that I can get that project underway. Um, and I do plan on storing the plants um, in our greenhouse because currently we're on a watch for third round of La Nina. They're predicting that it's probably gonna hit in spring, which is starting next month for us. And I really don't wanna to have to lose all of our Australian natives that we've just restocked in another lot of flooding so if I can keep them going in the greenhouse even if it means potting them up I can keep them going and then plant them out once it's declared as safe so I just don't want to have to go through doing a lot of hard work again and losing it all again because that it's really hard to deal with. <laughs> I do have some inspiration pictures that I've sort of been looking at as far as how to do that pathway and different plantings and that sort of thing and the embankment planting so I'll see if I can put those in right here reminder to self please insert those pictures right here so that they can see so just have a look at the little information pack that came with it Ooh, see where you concentrate that'd be good I like to use those it says to use them to reduce transplant shock so and improve root development so when it comes to actually watering in some of these I might actually mix up some of that in them and help it help settle the roots so the information pack that came with it is actually a winter gardening guide so um, it has some plants that they stock in it and also how to go about and care for certain types of plants. And also, that's interesting, it's one that we could always do with reading, is a, a page or two on winter colour, which winter in Australia is a bit bland. <laughs> a bit bland, there's not much flowering. So um, adding some winter interest is definitely something that I'm keen on. So I guess I'll be reading that. Um, and they've also included um, their product range and also a Department of Agriculture and Fisheries um, that's a biosecurity certificate saying that nothing that we've imported has anything to do with red imported fire ants so it must be something they legally have to send out I think. So I'm really impressed with the quality of those plants. I think that they look absolutely fantastic like those roots are ready to go so they say that if you purchase tube stock that um, versus like buying a more mature and established plant, that the root stuff tends to take off a lot quicker. So they recover a lot quicker being smaller. So it would be great in one hand to plant them into the garden. Um, however, a little bit stressed out about that at this point in time with that whole La Nina thing. So I think I will actually keep them in the greenhouse where I know that they're safe and they're protected. And as I said, just slowly build up some of the other plants that I want to do and then Hopefully once, if we get it announced that this La Nina isn't going to happen in springtime, we might actually be in a normal sort of, I think they call it a neutral weather pattern for us. So it would be in a neutral weather pattern, which would mean then that I'd be willing to take the risk on planting everything out because I think it's going to be safe and we're not going to have like those excessive, you know, thousand millilitres of rain in a few days sort of thing. So that's just, it's too much. I do have plans to um, purchase some more of the plants from Australian Plants Online. Um, they have my favourite gardenia. I'm a gardenia girl because I love the fragrance of them and a simple white bloom is just stunning to me. So um, they have Gardenia Magnifica um, and I'm looking to plant those out once we actually do build our forever home. We know exactly where it's going but obviously you can't do any planting out because it'll get ruined when the house sort of gets built. So it's a big section right in the front of, oh, 
sun's out wow <laughs> big section right in our lawn that is exactly where our forever home is going to be and we can't do any landscaping there so it's just left as if it doesn't exist at the moment it's like a no man's land um but i do plan on planting out some gardenias all around the house because i love their fragrance it's just timeless and i also have my eye on they do have a few different varieties of lavender um the lavender and the gardenias I'm looking at planting out. Um, I have obviously a little bit of a flooding issue with one of our gardens and we're looking at putting in a garden bed all along the very front of the chicken coop and of our actual cutting garden. Um, it'll be a raised garden bed in an effort to try and stop some of the water that comes down like flash flooding from the rest of the block to that area. Um, so I'm looking at planting that out with the Gardenia Magnifica and also some of the lavender. I do love Avon View, however, I haven't actually decided, I haven't hit purchase yet. <laughs> um, I haven't actually decided on if that's the one that I'm going to go for. So there's a few other varieties that I'll just want to make sure I do my research and, and get the right one. So lavender is quite hardy here. I know it only lasts for a couple of years in in landscaping but I think it's still beautiful anyway and it's definitely worth the investment and when you're purchasing at tube stock prices it's like you know three or five dollars compared to if you were buying more established you'd be looking at like 24 25 dollars so worth the investment thank you so much for joining me today while I opened up my happy mail it was very exciting um I really I like that idea of you know don't go out on the expensive dinner just put it towards the garden like I think that's a fantastic thing to do <laughs> my husband wasn't really impressed but I think it's a great idea so I'm looking forward to planting some of those um as I said I'll wait for that weather to pass and see how it goes but otherwise I think I'll keep them in the greenhouse where they're nice and safe and I don't have to worry about them I just can't wait to get those plants into the ground so if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing and then you can watch as I plant out the embankment and have all those pretty dreams come true. It really is a slow process building the property of your dreams. I think everybody has the slow process like <laughs> these things take time but I'm so excited to just little bit by little bit you know just getting that little bit further in and sort of you know doing a, a large project at a time to try and finish things off so that you actually feel like you're accomplishing something so my current goal is to finish off our vegetable garden um, we have sort of got where we're a little bit dry at this point in time enough to get trucks in and to be able to have deliveries made which means then that we can finish the garden bed off um, sorry the whole garden itself off so Hopefully that weather sticks around and I can get some materials delivered in time to actually have that sort of come to fruition very shortly. So it would be so nice just to have it so pretty. I can't wait. I want things to be pretty. We're, I'm over the whole functional part. I want things to be pretty now. So <laughs> bit by bit we'll get there. And thank you so much for joining today.